Hello, good evening. It's Dr. Praniti Shada, and today it is a discussion about the INI CET November 2022 ophthalmology recall. Now we'll start with the first question. The first question is an image based question. In this question, the diagnosis of the condition was asked, and we'll discuss the options one by one. The first option is the ankyloblephron. Now, what is ankyloblephron? Uh, basically, ankyloblephron. is a partial or total. Then chyloblephron can be partial or total fusion of upper and lower eyelid. As we can see in the diagram below, uh, which is given in the question, that is the fusion of the upper and lower eyelid. This condition is known as ankyloblephron. And the second option was symbaloblephron. Symbaloblephron is this condition in which the bulbar and the palpebular conjunctiva, they are fused. So, when the bulbar and palpebral conjunctiva, they are fused, is known as the symbaloblephron. Next is the entropion. This condition is entropion. What is an entropion? That is the inward turning of eyelid. Inward turning of the eyelid is anthropion. And the fourth option it was the trichiasis. And this is trichiasis that is the misdirection of eyelash. Single or multiple eyelashes misdirection is trichiasis. So the answer to this question is ankyloblephron that is the partial or the total fusion of the upper and lower eyelid. In this condition, it is shown that the partial fusion of the upper and eyelid has been shown, which is known as, this condition is known as ankyloblephron piliform atinatum. So, when the upper and lower eyelids are fused partially, it is known as the ankyloblephron filiform adnatum. That is the condition shown in the question. And it can be congenital, can be sporadic. Most common causes sporadic in nature. And the treatment is nothing but just the transaction of the fused part. Transaction with scissors is the treatment of choice. So the option number one is the right option. The second question is, Common sequelae of COVID-19. The most common sequelae of the COVID-19 is conjunctivitis. The most common manifestation of COVID-19 is conjunctivitis. Now, conjunctivitis, here are two options of it. One is follicular and other is papillary. Now, we know that follicular conjunctivitis is the feature of viral infection. So, viral infections, they cause follicular conjunctivitis. So, while papillary conjunctivitis is a manifestation of allergic conjunctivitis. COVID-19 is a form of viral conjunctivitis. So, the answer will be follicular conjunctivitis. Mucormycosis, it was also seen in COVID, but it is seen as a complication of COVID. It is not a manifestation of COVID-19, but a complication of COVID. So, mucormycosis is a complication of COVID-19. Uveitis is also seen as a part of COVID-19 but it's not the most common manifestation. Most common manifestation is conjunctivitis and since it is a virus, so the answer will be follicular conjunctivitis and papillary conjunctivitis is seen in allergic conditions. So the answer will be follicular conjunctivitis. The question number three is the most common cause of moderate to severe cause of blindness or visual impairment. Since there is a kind of debate in this question whether the blindness word was used or the visual impairment used because with these words the answer changes because the most common cause of blindness in India is the cataract so the most common cause of blindness is cataract but most common cause of visual impairment is uncorrected refractive errors we know that uh, in the cases of prevalence the cataract they constitute 
62% of blindness in India. Cataract is a cause of 62% causes of blindness in India, while reflective errors cause 19% of the blindness in India. But we know that the reflective errors as a whole, they are not the cause of blindness, they cause visual impairment. So if the question includes visual impairment, it has to be reflective error. But if the question included blindness, the answer had to be cataract. So if the it's just a matter of one word which changes the question and also the answer. So if blindness, cataract will be the best option, and in visual impairment, uncorrected reflective errors will be the option. Some important points which must be remembered while we discuss the refractive error and the blindness is the first is the prevalence that is 62% it constituted by cataract and 19% by refractive errors. And some other definitions we should also remember about the uh, blindness and visual impairment is the severity of the visual impairment. When we say patient has mild visual impairment, what it does mean? It means the vision of the patient is 612 to 618. 612 to 618 is the vision of the patient when we say mild visual impairment. Moderate visual impairment is when the vision is between 6 by 18 to 6 by 60 is the moderate visual impairment. Severe visual impairment is when the vision is less than 6 by 60 to 3 by 60. And most of the refractive errors, they lie or come under the classification of moderate to severe type of visual impairment. So the answer in that question, if it is asked visual impairment, so the answer will be uncorrected refractive errors. And next is the blindness. Blindness is when the patient has vision less than 3 by 60. So these are the classification of the visual impairment and blindness. The other important thing is the uh, we have labeled the blindness in some forms. So we should also know it. The first one is the economical blindness. These are some definitions in the visual impairment or blindness. First is the economical blindness. Economical blindness is a type of blindness. When the patient has vision of less than 6 by 60 to 3 by 60. If the vision is less than 6 by 60 to 3 by 60, it comes under the economical blindness. Next is the social blindness. Social blindness is when the vision is less than 3 by 60 to 1 by 60. It is known as social blindness. Third is legal blindness. Legal blindness is when the vision is less than 1 by 60 to perception of light. It is the legal blindness. And the fourth one is absolute blindness. Absolute blindness is when there is no perception of light. When even the perception of light is not present is the absolute blindness. So in this question, that's the, the option or the correct answer. We cannot say if it is blindness, then answer will be cataract. If visual impairment, the answer will be reflective error. Next question. A patient with a history of trauma with fish tail and complains of pain, photophobia and the diagnosis. And the image as given is, this given is hypopion. Even if we doesn't know, we can go with the question that patient has a history of trauma. The first thing. We know that patient is suffering from trauma with fish tail. The diagnosis is fungal corneal ulcer. We know that fungal corneal ulcer, they occur when there is a trauma, when patient has a trauma with vegetative matter. So vegetative matter, which can be animal tail, or plants, it is vegetative matter which can cause fungal ulcer. So the diagnosis is fungal or corneal ulcer and the patient has pain photophobia. The diagnosis of the image is asked. This is a characteristic feature of fungal corneal ulcer which is the hypopion. Now what is hypopion? 
is the first in anterior chamber. So, first in anterior chamber, we can clearly see whitish collection in the anterior chamber that is pus, which is known as hypopion. What is hyphema? Hyphema is blood in anterior chamber. Blood in the anterior chamber is hyphema. Okay. Kinetic precipitates and echo cells, they are features of uveitis. KPs are the collection of lymphocytes in the cornea and echo cells, they are seen in the anterior chamber. That is also a feature of uveitis. So the answer in this is hypopion. One important thing about hypopion fungal ulcer because have, we have made the diagnosis of fungal ulcer because of the history of trauma with vegetative matter. One important thing to be remembered in the hypopion of fungal ulcer is that it is always non-sterile and non mobile why it is non-sterile and non-mobile? Because the hyphae of the fungus, hyphae of the fungus, they can cross the corneal membranes and which then get accumulated in the AC, which make the hypopion of the ulcer as non-sterile and non-mobile because of the presence of hyphae. That is very important feature of fungal ulcer and it has also a differentiation of hypopion found in bacterial corneal ulcers. So the answer to this question is hypopion. The next question is atropine is contraindicated. In. Now we know that atropine as a general, it is a atropine is a midriatic. Atropine dilates the pupil. It is a midriatic. The first option is acute congestive glaucoma. That is the angle closure glaucoma. That is the newer term we used in acute congestive glaucoma is the angle closure glaucoma. Now we know that attack of the angle closure glaucoma, it occurs always in the mid-dilated pupil. Mid-dilated pupil causes the attack of acute angle closure. So if we put atropine drops in such patient, it will dilate the pupil and it will precipitate the angle closure. It will precipitate angle closure in a patient. It will, uh, the patient will present with pain and it will precipitate the closure, angle closure in a patient if of acute congestive glaucoma if we put atropine. So in such patients, atropine is contraindicated. So, atropine is a contraindication in the patient of acute congestive glaucoma. Next option is malignant glaucoma. In malignant glaucoma, the atropine is a drug of choice. Atropine is a drug of choice in malignant glaucoma. What is malignant glaucoma is a type of or it is a form of secondary glaucoma in which there is misdirection of the ciliary misdirection of the ciliary process. Misdirection of the ciliary process which causes the malignant glaucoma. And it is a very important thing about this is why it is known as the term of malignant glaucoma because it increases uh, even if we put drops, even if we treat it increases so it is known as malignant glaucoma and in such conditions atropine is the drug of choice uh, because due to the misdirection of the ciliary processes the aqueous humor uh, gets collected behind the vitreous uh, or behind the lens and the vitreous so it causes the uh, there is shifting of the lens uh, diaphragm and there is angle closure glaucoma due to the misdirection of ciliary processes and in such condition atropine is the drug of choice so that it gets dilated and the misdirection of ciliary processes gets corrected. Next is the uveitis. In a condition uveitis, that is the inflammation of the anterior chamber, atropine is there used as the adjuvant therapy. Atropine is used as an adjuvant therapy because if we dilate the pupil in uveitis, the patient gets uh, relief from the symptoms of photophobia, of pain. 
so it is used as an adjuvant therapy in uveitis because of the uh, relief of symptoms like pain in uveitis and also by giving the dilator effect in uveitis we can prevent the formation of cynechia so cynechia formation gets prevented and we can also prevent the patient from symptoms like pain etc so it is used as an adjuvant therapy also in cordial ulcer it is used as an adjuvant therapy because the patient gets relief from the symptoms like pain and also from the formation of cynechia so the answer to this question will be acute congestive glaucoma where it is contraindicated next question is a uh, balance chart question that is a very basic <coughs> Uh, type of question of this level chart. Level chart is the most common chart used for visual acuity assessment. The question is angle subtended by six by six letter in level chart from six meter is. To solve this, uh, solve this question, firstly we will have to discuss about the basic terminologies used in visual acuity. Uh, what is the numerator and denominator we use in level chart is? The numerator is basically the distance where the patient is standing is the numerator. And denominator is the distance where the normal person can see that letter. That is the denominator. Now, we have to discuss about the MAR. That is the minimal angle of resolution. Based on the minimum angle of resolution, <coughs> Each letter of Snellen chart, each letter of this Snellen chart has five segments and each segment subtends <coughs> an angle of one minute of arc. Each segment substance an angle of one minute of arc. Each letter has five segments. Every letter of this knowledge chart can be divided into five segments and each segment substance an angle of one minute of arc. So in total, the total letter substance an angle of one into five, that is five minutes. Okay, now to solve such type of questions, <coughs> We just have to simply reverse the visual activity. Okay. To know the angle subtended by each segment, we just have to reverse the visual activity. In this question, the visual activity given is 6 by 6. The reverse of it is 6 by 6. Okay. So, each angle subtended is 6 by 6. That is 1. And total segments are 5. So, 1 is to 5 is 5 minutes. So, the answer to this question becomes 5 minutes. Okay. If the question is asked about 6 by 60, so what will be uh, the answer to this question? Will uh, If the visual equity is 6 by 60, we'll reverse it. It will be 60 by 6. 60 by 6, that is 10 minutes of arc by one segment. So in total, it will be 10 into 5, 50 minutes of arc. Each letter of Snellen chart has total 5 segments. Each segment substance an angle of 1 minute. So the total letter substance an angle of 5 minutes. Uh, if the patient has 6 by 6 vision. And actually uh, how do we do that? We just have to uh, reverse the visual equity of the patient. And if the patient has 6 by 60 vision. So the angle will be 60 by 6 that is 10. And 10 minutes of arc, total segments of the letter have 5. So it will be 10 into 5, that is 50 minutes of arc. If the question uh, was that the vision of the patient is 6 by 60, okay, then how much angle substantive that we need also the distance. If the distance of the patient is 60 meters, then what will be the answer? Then the, if the question has 60 meters, then the uh, it will be like 10 minutes of arc and the distance also comes to play that is 60 by 60. It comes again 1 and the answer will be 5 minutes. 
But if the question says that vision of the patient is 6 by 60 and he is standing at a distance of 6 meters, then answer will become the 50 minutes. So in this question, the visual acuity of the patient is 6 by 6. Patient is standing at 6 meters. So the answer will be 5 minutes. The next question is, which of the following is incorrect regarding complicated cataract? Which of this is incorrect regarding complicated cataract? These are the some diagrams of the complicated cataract. The first is the, this is the breadth of appearance. Red cup appearance is a type of cataract which is seen in the complicated cataract. This is polychromatic lustre. It is also a feature of complicated cataract. Now, why do complicated cataracts are answer? Complicated cataract occur due to any intraocular pathology. So complicated cataract occur due to any intraocular pathology. It can be due to drugs which affect the uh, eye. It can be due to trauma. It can be due to inflammation or infection of the eye. So it can be due to the usage of some drugs. It can be due to trauma. It can be due to inflammation. And we know that uveitis is a kind of ocular inflammation. So it is seen after uveitis is the right option. Red crumby appearance is seen in the cataract. It is a feature of cataract, complicated cataract. Polychromatic luster is a form of cataract. The fourth option is the Krukenberg spindle, which is not seen in complicated cataract. Krukenberg spindle is just the pigmentation of the caudal layers that is seen in glaucoma. Which type of glaucoma it is seen? It is seen in pigmentary glaucoma. which is a form of secondary glaucoma. Basically, what is happening in this is, this is a configuration of iris. This is a normal configuration of iris. It is present in normal conditions. What happens in pigmentary glaucoma is this configuration gets changed. The configuration of the iris gets changed. And if the patient exercises Sometimes it gets precipitated or it is commonly seen in such patients due to exercise. The iris pigments get rubbed due to the eye exercises or hyperactivity. It gets rubbed and the pigments are released which then can accumulate in the cornea which is known as the Krukenberg spindle. So it is a feature of glaucoma, secondary glaucoma. So it will be the option in this. Rest all the features are seen in the complicated cataract. Next question is, which of the following drugs increase the trabecular outflow? The mechanism of action of the anti-glaucoma drugs, very repeated question it is asked. First is the timolol. Timolol is a beta blocker. Okay, timolol is a beta blocker. What is the mechanism of action of beta blockers? They decrease the aqueous production. Beta blockers decrease aqueous production. Acetazolamide, <coughs> acetazolamide it is a prostaglandin, so it increases the uveoscleral outflow. Primonidine has dual action. It is primonidine is an alpha two agonist. It has a dual mode of action. It decreases the aqueous production and increases uveoscleral outflow. Uh, basically, most of the anti-glaucoma drugs which were used till now, they had main two modes of action. One is the decreasing the production or increasing the uveoscleral outflow. But we know that the main source of outflow of the aqueous normally is the trabecular flow. We know that there are two main outflows of the aqueous human. That is the through the trabecular meshwork or through the uveoscleral pathway. Trabecular meshwork constitutes most of the uh, part or the most of the aqueous flows through the trabecular meshwork and very less 20 to 30 percent flows through the uveoscleral pathway. But most of the anti-glaucoma drugs which are available till now, 
used to increase the uveoscleral outflow but nitarsudil that is a very recent addition of anti glaucoma drugs it increases the trabecular meshwork so it is a very effective anti glaucoma drug which has come into the market right now which increases the trabecular meshwork and also decreases the production it also has a dual action of mechanism by increasing the trabecular meshwork and decreasing production so it is a very very beneficial anti glaucoma drug the tarsudil is basically a pro kinase inhibitor which decreases or increases the trabecular meshwork outflow and decreases aqueous production and it is a very new drug to be used in anti glaucoma that is the ditarsidil and the mechanism of action is also new because the earlier we used had either by increasing uveoscleral flow or by decreasing the production the next question is true about optic neuritis we know that optic neuritis is a demyelinating disease of the eye and any demyelinating uh, disease or the optic nerve disease we know that the feature the characteristic feature of the first clinical sign we see in such diseases is the rdpd that is relative apparent pupillary defect which is also known as the marcus gunn pupil so marcus gunn pupil is in most of the optic nerve diseases is the first sign which we see so marcus gunn pupil is the rule in the optic nerve diseases optic nerve diseases marcus gunn pupil is the rule multiple myeloma is a causative factor no actually multiple sclerosis is the most common cause of optic neuritis it is not the multiple myeloma but multiple sclerosis third is the oral steroids are drug of choice basically no steroids are drug of choice but iv steroids are drug of choice not the oral steroids but the iv steroids next is the crct is the investigation of choice that is also wrong because MRI is the investigation of choice. Basically, CT. Basically, we know that generally CT scan is ordered in the cases of bony lesions. And MRI, when we have to study soft tissue or the brain <laughs> matter, we have to study. We order MRI. So MRI is the investigation of choice in optic neuritis or multiple sclerosis, which is the most common cause of. optic neuritis and the treatment of choice is steroids but not orally they are given iv then we shift to oral basically we start with iv steroids and then we also shift to oral steroids but iv steroids the first and the treatment of choice without iv steroids oral steroids have no role iv steroids are must and we start it as soon as possible and marcus gunn pupil or the rapd is the rule in any kind of optic nerve and this is an image showing the rapd in this when there is positive rapd the pupil gets dilated when we show the light the pupil gets dilated and that is the rapd which is rule in the optic nerve disease the next question is a pregnant lady with unilateral headache pulsation proptosis diplopia tinnitus fundus examination is normal which of the structures are involved first when we go through the question patient has headache okay pulsation pulsation word means if word pulsation is being used that we mean any artery is involved blood vessel is involved so pulsational proptosis we get the idea that vessel or artery is involved diplopia cranial nerve involved okay fundus is thought <coughs> cavernous sinus sixth nerve internal carotid artery third nerve internal carotid artery involved too because pulsational proptosis is there diplopia is there diplopia occurs due to involvement of cranial nerves third nerve has to be involved fourth nerve has to uh, sixth nerve has to be involved. three four six are the cranial nerves which can cause diplopia in a patient so these are also the right option cavernous sinus all these internal carotid artery sixth nerve third nerve they are a part of the cavernous sinus they are present in the cavernous sinus so the cavernous sinus is also involved now if it is a multiple option question all the four options are correct 
if they are given like one of the option was all of the above but it were they were given in combination then uh, that option would be correct or if it is a multiple answer question that all the options are correct because all these structures are a part of cavernous sinus and the cavernous sinus is including none of the option is wrong in this question so maybe it is a multiple answer question and all of the answers are correct next question is not seen in glaucoma disc changes glaucoma disc changes that is the retina or the fundus changes in the glaucoma <coughs> increased ct ratio sub to disc ratio very peculiar of the uh, glaucoma there is vertical increase in ct ratio that is we know if it is more than 0.7 that is very characteristic of the glaucoma there is vertical increase the cupping becomes vertical increase in cup to disc ratio so it is right it is seen bayonetting sign bayonetting sign is basically <coughs> this this image is showing bayonetting sign in this there is z appearance z shaped appearance of the vessels is seen z z shaped appearance of the vessels is seen in this <coughs> there is double bending of the vessels inside the cup when they are entering there is double bending of the blood vessels is seen which is a feature of the glaucoma that is the bayonetting sign next is the nasal step actually nasal step is not a disc change it is not a retina change it is seen in the visual fields it is a feature of the perimetry or the visual fields nasal step is also seen in glaucoma it is a right option but it is not a disc change or a fundus change it is a change of visual fields nasal shifting of vessels is also seen in glaucoma because the nasal side of the disc is the last one to go in glaucoma because of the thickness of the <coughs> disc there so the vessels get attracted towards the nasal side and it is known as the nasalization of the vessels so it is also a feature of the glaucoma disc changes so in this question the answer will be the nasal step which is a feature of glaucoma but on perimetry on visual thing not on this okay so the next question is the image based question incorrect about the lesion this is an image of pterygium this uh, this image is of pterygium first option is simple excision can reduce recurrence by 90 to 95% it consists of head neck and body progressive and regressive type elastomeric degeneration of the collagen this is the pterygium which has three parts we know that it is it has head it has neck and body but it has head neck and body these are the three parts of the pterygium it has progressive and regressive type no doubt <coughs> if uh, there are two type of degen basically we know that pterygium is an elastotic degeneration of the collagen elastotic degeneration of collagen that is fourth point is right it can be progressive it can be regressive there are two type of changes in pterygium hyperplastic and degenerative <laughs> if hyperplastic changes are more than degenerative changes the pterygium will be progressive if degenerative changes are more than hyperplastic changes it will be regressive so it can be progressive it can be regressive again so it consists of head and neck body yes it has three types simple excision can reduce recurrence by 90% very wrong because simple excision uh in this the chance of recurrence is 30 to 70% simple excision can cause the recurrence by 30 to 70% simple excision is a very easiest type of treatment which can be which can be done in pterygium but not the treatment of choice treatment of choice is by conjunctival autograft which reduces its recurrence rate so conjunctival autograft is the treatment of choice because simple excision by bayer sclera technique can cause recurrence by 30 to 70% so this option is wrong that is this option is incorrect uh, about the lesion so the correct answer becomes because in this question we have been asked the incorrect this statement is incorrect so it is the answer to the question
नेक्स्ट इज दी मोस्ट कॉमन प्राइमरी ट्यूमर एसोसिएटेड विद रेटिनोब्लास्टोमा ऑप्शन गिवन आई कुड नॉट रिकलेक्ट दी ऑप्शन गिवन बट द मोस्ट कॉमन प्राइमरी ट्यूमर एसोसिएटेड विद रेटिनोब्लास्टोमा इज पीनिलोब्लास्टोमा pinoblastoma is the most common <coughs> tumor primary tumor associated with retinoblastoma but there is also one another question most common tumor associated with treated retinoblastoma is then the answer becomes osteosarcoma if the question asked is most common primary tumor then it retinoblastoma most common primary tumor associated treated retinoblastoma is osteosarcoma then the answer will become osteosarcoma next is there was match the following one of the option that could not be collected but now let's try to match the other one first is gat what is gat it is old man ablation tonometer basically gold standard test to measure iop it is a gold standard test of iop measuring so a uh, goldman ablation test it is a type of tonometer to measure intraocular pressure and it is a gold standard test next is the perimetry perimetry we do for peripheral vision perimetry is a or visual fields is a type of test we use for peripheral vision is chart uh, test or chart we do for color vision these are the options which we can easily match the third option or the type of investigation could not be recollected but the left option is only central vision it can be the answer to this question so the matching is gat with iop ishtihara chart with color vision perimetry for peripheral vision the next question is not seen in keratoconus <coughs> the keratoconus we know that keratoconus is an they basically there is a change in shape of the cornea into conical structure and these are the signs which we see in the keratoconus first is the munson sign what is munson sign when in the down gaze there is conical projection of the cornea when the patient is seeing in the downward direction in on downward gaze there is a conical projection of the eyelid because of the conical shape of the cornea there is conical projection of the eyelid the eyelids get a conical projection because the cornea is, has assumed the shape of a cone because of the constant rubbing so the lid also assumes the conical shape when the patient is in downward gaze So the Munson sign is seen in keratoconus. Next is a seizing reflex. It is a type of retinoscope change. It we see it in on retinoscopy because of the oblique uh, type of astigmatism found in keratoconus. Seizing reflex is a feature of keratoconus. Harb stri. <laughs> Basically, there are two types of stri which we see in ophthalmology. One is Harb stri, other is Vogue stri. Now, how to remember is H for hub, H for horizontal. So the hub stri are horizontal in nature, which are seen in congenital glaucoma. The other one are V for vertical, V for vogs. So vogs stri are vertical, which are seen in keratoconus. So hub stri is the option irregular astigmatism seen because we know that the pathology of keratoconus is what due to constant rubbing of the eyelid because the patient in such cases most of the patient they are uh, there is history of past history of uh, vkc vernal keratoconjunctivitis and due to constant rubbing there is change in shape of the cornea which causes the patient to suffer from irregular astigmatism and a change in shape of the cornea which we see in topography that is topographical changes they are the investigation of stri in keratoconus vogue stri that are vertical stri which are seen in keratoconus precious ring hydrops basically when there is a accumulation of fluid in the corneal layers it is known as hydrops this ring reflex is seen on retinoscopy 
and resumed his side when we uh, from flash of light from the lateral side of the uh, eyeball we can see a, a projection a conical projection on the nasal side which is known as the resumed side these are some of the classical signs seen in keratoconus uh last question is the patient with icterus in eye there is jaundice patient has jaundice which is seen in icterus there are there are elevated liver enzymes there is ataxia and rigidity a very classical symptoms very straight forward question that is wilson disease ataxia and rigidity due to the involvement of the basal ganglia elevated liver enzyme due to the involvement of the hepatic structures and the icterus in eye wilson disease wilson disease is occurring because of the increased copper upper accumulation in the body in the liver which causes <coughs> wilsons and in such cases wilson disease there is accumulation of copper in the basement membrane which we see as KF rings, KF rings seen in on the decimate membrane of the eyes, very characteristic of the Wilson disease. A very, uh, this is a very <coughs> straightforward question. Increased copper, which gets accumulated on the decimate membrane and is known as the KF rings, easily seen. And the uh, answer to this question is Wilson. So these were the questions which are asked in the INI CET. Uh, most of the questions they are very straightforward, and one of the question which was asked that is the uh, most common sequel of the COVID nineteen was a repeat question from the NEET PG asked earlier in the NEET PG twenty twenty two was the most common sequel, and the exact question was repeated, and other questions mostly they were very straightforward, not so but the complicated questions were not asked in ophthalmology so this was the INICET recall session thank you